避けた嘘だあっクソ何なんだよあああそう、私は考えていました。ロボットは素晴らしいですね。実際、私は初めてファンのメカを見たことがあります。ジーガンダムというのは、最も嫌いなゴンダムの映画です。このゴンダムは、ゴンダムの力を持っているゴンダムの力を持っているゴンダムの力を持っているゴンダムの力を持っているゴンダムの力を持っているゴンダムの力を持っているゴンダムの力を持っているゴンダムの力を持っている They're the perfect ones to sacrifice. With the help of KOJ! Being a four episode miniseries, it's surprising how well they managed to pace the show. The music kept footing with the animation at every step, and the gripping dark reality of war being portrayed in a very human and vulnerable way had me glued to my seat. I think Sunrise has really outdone themselves with this one. After the show had completed, Sunrise combined the four episodes of Thunderbolt's first season into a feature film as well. Which might merit a rewatch for myself, and I suppose I would recommend that you do so for your first watch. I've always been a fan of Sunrise Entertainment. They had a huge impact on my youth, the anime community, and pop culture in general. You might know them as the studio behind Code Geass, Cowboy Bebop, Gundam, Escaflone, Inuyasha, Outlaw Star, Sergeant Frog, the list goes on and on. To be plainly honest, I think this might be their best work since the release of Code Geass. The writing and presentation is just phenomenal. The characters are interesting, and even if a few are flat and one note, everyone is sympathetic and has understandable motivations and actions. For a story as simple as this, I'm not sure that all characters need more than one personality trait. This is saving Private Ryan in space with mechs, not Breaking Bad. So, some of the more simple characters actually play to the strength of the writing. The story also really achieves showing that war is hell and keeps a perfectly fitting mood and tone for the whole runtime, something I find more and more uncommon as I keep reviewing media. Regardless of if you watch Thunderbolt as a dub or a sub, it has excellent voice acting and sound, unlike some certain Gundam shows. Some of the sound effects are stock Gundam sounds, but they are still used tastefully and almost feel like an homage. The soundtrack is one of Thunderbolt's strongest aspects. How it uses music to tell a story is nothing outside of brilliant. Our two main characters, Eo, a Federation pilot, and Daryl, a Xeon pilot, are both shown to have particular tastes in jazz and pop music, respectively. Then, going forward, the music is almost as much of a character as our protagonists. The music will sometimes disappear, and then every time it shows back up, you're happy to hear it, thinking, oh, wow, I'm glad they brought that back. It's also used as a framing device to let the audience know which side of the fight they're watching. For a show that frequently swaps back and forth between the two sides of the conflict, that's a great way to solve the age old problem of viewers getting lost. If you're watching the Federation forces, you hear free jazz and stylish brass. And for the Xeon forces, there is always some soft pop music playing in the background.戦闘中の更新記録を聞いたわ。フーバーを殺した連邦のパイロット。ジャズが聞こえたらその男が来てアイスなんでしょ。ええ。お願いよ、ダリル。その男を必ず殺してね。この選曲いいね。いいよ。
This is a common problem with Warfront stories, but in visual media, all sorts of tricks are used to let the audience know who they're watching. Audio is actually one of the least used tricks for this type of thing that I've seen. Usually the use of colors or costumes are used. Right next to the sound, the Xeon ships all have this green, dirty, and rustic look to them, while the Federation ships are all sleek and silver, helping the music with its job of differentiating the sides of the conflict. It reminds me a lot of the strong design choices used in Legend of the Galactic Heroes, in which you're always immediately able to know which side of the conflict you're on just from the uniforms, personality, or even just how the room is decorated. Actually, the art of Thunderbolt in general is just wonderful. The style and animation is absolutely beautiful, blending 3D and hand-drawn animation together seamlessly in some cases. I know I dogged on Invincible for failing in this aspect really hard, and I'm sure that some of you didn't like that, but Thunderbolt is an amazing example of how to do it right. Amazon could learn a thing or two about how this show is presented in general. The way that thick lines are used for shading also made the art style immediately identifiable using still shots. It's not as good as something like Redline, but it's definitely up there when it comes to the use of lines to give extra effect. Due to how Thunderbolt is drawn, you'll never mistake it for another Gundam show. Maybe because they wanted to add a little bit more spice to an old series, this is also probably the most gritty Gundam show that I've ever seen. Murders are shown plainly on screen, with a lot of deaths in general being particularly disturbing. The plot also tackles the use of drugs to escape from reality, and what it means to be loyal to your country in a time of war. What should be considered going too far when it comes to saving the life of thousands? Is it ethical to ruin the life of one person to save the majority? How about revenge, or using one's own scientific research to fight for a cause that you don't believe in? For a four-episode series, a lot of ground is covered, and gracefully at that. Gundam Thunderbolt Season 1 gets a 9 out of 10. Great. I highly recommend you watch it. You won't be disappointed. If you like this review, please leave a comment below telling me what I should review next. Come and hang out in the Discord and Twitch streams, or just stream on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more I'll Review Anything content. I'm sorry it's been so sparse recently, but I've been doing a lot of extra stuff to make my life better in general. I'm going to the gym now, I'm keeping my house clean, I'm paying my debts, and just in general kind of trying to turn my life around. I hope you guys understand that this kind of stuff takes a while, but I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Love ya. Mwah. Poor Domon. Do you really expect to defeat me when you've been exhibiting this level of fighting? Yeah!